the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. I didn't expect a crowd like Christmas. <laughs> now that the, everything is warmer, there's no ice out, the number goes down. <laughs> Crazy. Let's pause just for a moment and tell Christ we're sorry for our sins. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you who are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who is pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity, and so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what good will your gifts do if I keep on being childless and have as my heir the steward of my house, Elijah. Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up to the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah as he had said he would. He did for her as he promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham, a son in his old age, at set time that God had stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son of his whom Sarah bore him. The word of the Lord. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. 
Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength, constantly seeking his face. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen one, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and his oath to, his, to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age. And Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sands on the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he, who had received the promise, was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. In these days, he has spoken to us through the Son. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen Christ the Lord of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him. He took him into his arms and blessed God saying, Now, Master, you can let your servant go in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and a glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, This child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. 
and you yourself a sword will pass, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the, the, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having living, lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who are awaiting the redemption of Israel. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Seems like I just left here for Christmas. <laughs> and we're starting up again, and I really didn't start on my homily until this morning or today. And so I picked up my little blue book, and I got a lot out of this little blue book. How many of you read this little blue book? No, five, ten, five, eight. But anyway, I, homily is mainly the second page of today's reading. And uh, I started by thinking, look at Matthew's gospel and Luke's gospel, and who says that these guys never make a mistake in this writing the scriptures, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and all the Testament, that it's free from error. Well, it's free from mistakes of leading people in the wrong direction. It's not free from error. And I'll show you, that's what she says, this nun is really good. This came from Saginaw, Michigan, where it all started out, and it just keeps on pumping away every, uh, you know, Lent and Advent and so forth. But the thing is, when you look at Matthew's gospel and you look at Luke's gospel, it doesn't, one of them has to be wrong, okay? So if you look in uh, Matthew's gospel, Matthew presupposed that Joseph and Mary lived in Bethlehem. They were called to register, and so they left to go to register in Bethlehem in that area. And then she being pregnant, then she had the child Jesus, and everybody was rushing to this spot where they had a register, and she had her baby, and then nothing said, but soon, right after, Herod wanted to start killing the little babies. And so Joseph, in a dream then, the family, the holy family, in a dream then, finally the angel says, get the child and your wife out of here, and go to Egypt. And so they do. And they say in Egypt, but they don't go back there because there's still fear, I guess. But they go and they go all the way north to Nazareth. What kind of trip is that? Well, if you would go from Lexington, Kentucky to Northern Kentucky, Cincinnati or Northern Kentucky, it's about 90 miles. And Bethlehem, if you go 90 miles north, you'll hit Nazareth. So according to Matthew, because you gotta get the child Jesus in Nazareth because that's where they brought him up, as it says at the end of today's gospel. And so they're doing all this stuff and he says hey, they're there and they go here and then they go to Egypt and then they, whoosh, and they shoot right back 90 miles up north to Nazareth. Hmm, interesting. At least I found it to be. I found it to be interesting because Luke sort of presupposed that they were engaged or married and the, the pregnancy that they were in Nazareth. 
And then they were called to register. And then they take that 90 mile trip and they go to Bethlehem or the area around Bethlehem where there's no room in the inn and so forth. And then Mary has the baby, same way. And then Herod threatens all these little babies. And so they go to Egypt for a time and then they go back up, all the way back up to Nazareth again. And that's where Jesus grew in wisdom, age, and grace. And that is really important because Jesus was the son of God who became a baby into this miraculous family or wild family. And baby, they had problems, you know, from the uh, virgin birth to the, uh, the birth of the child to the Jesus going to the temple and misbehaving, in quotes. And Jesus learning all this stuff, and Jesus grew in wisdom and age as a good Jew. Jesus wanted to be a good Jew. And apparently he was intelligent, and apparently he was a good Jewish family, and he winds up wanting to be a good Jew, but he sees in the Jewish religion something like some of us see in the Roman Catholic Church, or like some of us see right now in our, our federal government. But let's stick with the church. And then Jesus, he did have the insight, and Jesus, the Heavenly Father sent him to speak to the world, the great prophet, Jesus. And when you speak truth, as we know today, a lot of people don't like truth. And they're threatened by truth. And they make up or won't believe or they'll believe something just sort of taught the opposite. Even at this time, Jesus does this. He was sharp. He loved his father. He loved his religion. And he would live it, or he would also point out the spots where it didn't work out too well. You know, we would say, isn't it Roman Catholics, you know, they don't know what they're doing. They just go to church because they have to go to church, except during pandemics. But anyway, they have to go to church because of the law. They really don't know what they're doing. Well, Jesus would say, you know, you, you rabbis or you Pharisees, and you, you don't even practice what you preach. And you superimpose on all these people these obligations and how many steps they can take on the Sabbath. And so Jesus would, he would say, that's crazy. Which of you would have an ox or an ass that drew, fell into the pit and they, wouldn't you pull him out on the Sabbath, you know? But there were many things like that. And so I find it interesting that the problem Jesus had and what he got himself into and threatened so many people, uh, it still happens today. It still happens today. And so what I decided to do this morning was to show you how that just happens today or at the time of Jesus and then in the early church and then in around 304, the Constantine church where it became very institutional and so forth and then we're wound up pretty united until the east and the broke with the west. And then in the west later on, the west broke apart with the reformation. And we just had a terrible turnaround or tune in on Vatican Council. But this morning when I was doing my thing on uh, YouTube, I, I finished where I just stopped here. And, I, and it said nine minutes. And I was just getting ready to go to point two and I says I am not they've been in church enough you just got point one well when I go home tonight I hope because I did point two on YouTube second YouTube and I just find it it really is interesting when you look at Jesus who would question the Jewish religion point out parts that he didn't agree with and he got into deep trouble.
lot of people in religion who does do the same thing today. A lot of things. So these people, the Holy Family, had big problems like people today have big problems. The leaders of the day, and Jesus was a great leader, of course. John, John the Baptist also questioned and told a few things and got into deep trouble and had his head cut off. So things haven't changed too much. The kingdom of God's coming, but it sure is slow getting here. It really is slow. Why don't you help it out? Of <laughs> In a, hurry it up. Hurry it up. But So, I'm sorry, but I'm tired. I had five masses. I'll end with this. I had three masses here, and I had another special mass I've been doing for 14 years with a, a group of people. And then I went home and took a nap. And I got up, and I made a few phone calls because I didn't go out to anybody's house for dinner and stuff, but I watched the Pope's Mass. I do that every year. I record it. You know, it's on from 11.30 to 1. And I recorded it around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. I didn't make a few calls and all kinds of stuff, but it really was good. And one of the reasons was I was thinking of Jesus Christ growing up in, in Nazareth and going to his uh, public ministry and how he did it and how the early church worked and so forth and you know how the present Roman Catholic Church is. They didn't have it at the main altar, if you didn't go. They had it at the small altar all the way in the back of church, and there was only about 100 people there. And the Pope really speaks well, is right on, I mean, he's talking about the message of Jesus really well. And I thought, we still have it, but I like this new version that they did, you know. It's sometimes like, you know, we had 300 people, 300 some people over the weekend here, I think, right, Don? 300 some people. And it seemed so nice that all the chairs were filled, you know. And now we're back. Now we're back. But at any rate, point one over. If you want point two, you really like punishment. You can go to you can go to YouTube. Please stand we'll pray. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were a family who trusted God's love and care. With the same confidence, we present to God some of our needs and concerns. That Christians practice kindness and patience every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of the world value families, affirming all children will grow in wisdom and truly value the lessons learned from their parents. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that the many ministries of the church may strengthen family life throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That families separated by war or distance be reunited in God's boundless love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the, for, for the poor, the lonely, and the ne neglected, that they will experience God's love during this Christmas season, through the kindness of other families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elderly, the sick, the dying, and their caregivers, especially those affected by COVID-19 virus, that we be strengthened by the love of Christ and may the vaccine developed help all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have left this world, that as they shared our Christmas joy on earth, may they come to enjoy eternal glory in God's kingdom, and that their families be comforted by the peace of Christ in their hearts, especially for the eternal joy of George Soretsky. We pray to the Lord. Faithful God, you offer us your son, Jesus, that we might share your life. Hear our prayers and give answer through that same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds so that as we recognize in Christ God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love things invisible. So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many.
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, all the clergy and all the laity. Remember also all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and co the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. One quick little announcement. This Tuesday, there will not be the normal 930 Mass because we're having a funeral during that Mass. Anybody is welcome to come to it. It's Mary Lou Blair's funeral at 930. Okay. Have a good evening. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, do love, and serve the Lord.